Assalamualaikum to everybody who's out there, who's tuned into PTV World and are watching World this morning. Along to the very fantastic, the very amazing, the very superb, the very talented, the very white, Shazah Hashmi, and I happen to be Shazad Asan Khan. We hope and we pray that everybody out there is doing wonderfully well and that you guys are ready to kickstart your Wednesdays with us. Hello, Shiza. How are you doing today? I'm doing absolutely great. Thank you so much for asking. And I have to mention over here, well, I mean, of course, I have to ask you how you feel. But ladies and gentlemen, I absolutely love people who bring professionalism to the table, especially when we're talking about workplaces. Wow. And I'm talking about you, Shazad, because we know we've seen you for ever since the weekend. I know Thank that you you've much. been under flu or some sort of, you know, yeah. winter allergies and whatnot. And just before we go on air, he's still sick. I tell you that his face and his voice, it's everything sick. But I think as soon as we start the show, you get that energy. You yeah. sort of share it with everyone. I catch it because it's so, uh, what, what's Contagious. the word? Contagious. Contagious, yeah. absolutely. It's that. Uh, so I'm really hoping and praying that these vibes and these energies actually get out through your screens onto your day as well. And I hope you have an amazing day. Exactly. Well, that's wonderful. Ladies and gentlemen, the weather over here in Islamabad is changing drastically. You know, you go inside your house in an evening and you move outside your house, you know, almost after two hours. Yeah. You know, there's a four degree drop in the temperature as well. So, so please quick. make sure that you're actually wearing warm clothes as well. Dress accordingly because the only people who are actually going to feel really, really cold this time around, ladies and gentlemen, I do not want to say, but I think I'll say it as well, is going to be women because, uh, <laughs> alhamdulillah, Shadi season is going to be on as well. Yes. And they really want to show their dresses. And this is why women dress up. They dress up so that they can show the other ladies around that, <laughs> hey, you know what? I look fantastic, which is great. Whatever anybody and everybody wants to do, they have the right to do it. Right, absolutely. But also, don't you feel like, I mean, thank God we exist in times where heaters or central heating is actually a concept, right? So yeah. we do have the option of actually just uh, removing our shawl and enjoying the fashion that still exists as well. I feel like we need to talk about this, of course, maybe in the next segment, exactly. how heating and even cooling for that matter can change and has to change as well. Wow. But yes, thanks for bringing wow, it up. Wow, very <laughs> smart early in the morning, ladies and gentlemen. So first things first, obviously, congratulations to all those Pakistanis yes. who are out there. Brilliant Because job. Pakistan cricket team, ladies and gentlemen, has qualified for the semi-final. Imagine that yesterday it was Pakistan locking their horns against Namibia, won the toss and chose to bat first, which was way uh, different for Pakistan because early in the first... But don't you think it was the right decision? I mean, it was the right decision, but it could have gone otherwise as well because Namibia did really ball well in the first six overs as well, where we were not very lucky with uh, getting a lot of score. But other than that, it was a risky decision. Barbara Azam did a great job. We even spoke about a few changes, but they didn't change the squad, which I believe was a wonderful tactic and I think that they have stuck by or they have stood by the squad uh, which has actually helped us win and qualify for the semi-final as well. But uh, Rizwan was fantastic even though that he got hit with the ball during the match. He stood there and he made sure that he's going to score plenty of runs and which he did. He, I guess somewhat he was around 79 and Babar was somewhat around 71 and 72. So we were 189 for the loss of two wickets in 20 overs. And while and Namibia chose to chase, oh. ladies and gentlemen, it was a little unfortunate for them because they lost all their way. I mean, in 20 overs, they were 144 the for the loss of five wickets, which means Hi. Pakistan did qualify for the semi-final. And I guess that and we are the first team to qualify for the semi-finals as well. Yes, absolutely. That too. And I feel like after so many years now that the performances definitely Don't improved and a lot of Pakistanis quite. are super proud and happy with the team. Four matches in a row. Yeah. I mean, I was happy with the hat-trick, but I had my reservations sort of. I mean, superstitious re reservations, <laughs> let's say that. Yeah. Because I was thinking we've already won three matches. There's a hat-trick. I don't feel like we can do this one because, I mean, you know, the winning streak is over. Maybe we won't do it. But of course, I think now I have to believe that we don't have any doubt left in our team as well and the squad, which makes me think, well, there's a tweet actually. Yeah, yeah. but before we move on to that tweet, I really want to say that, Ramiz Raja, you're doing a great job because bringing in Matthew Hayden actually kind of gave us that Aussie mm, aggression which true. we wanted. And Alhamdulillah, now when we see our players enjoying on field is a very different body language and confidence which inshallah will take Pakistan to the finals as well and that we're going to get the trophy. And while we're going to get the trophy, there's this one gentleman on Twitter who actually thought of this. I mean, nobody actually thought of it. Uh, let's so, look at so it. So I think that the first things first, what we need to do is that we really need to look at this tweet. Go ahead, take a look at this tweet and then we will kind of discuss 
how amazing it's going to be for Pakistan this time around. But let me tell you huh. that in last 10 years, mm -hmm. you know, Pakistan didn't really qualify in the last 10 years only. Pakistan didn't really qualify for the semi-finals of the T20 World Cup or any other World Cup as well. So I think congratulations after a decade, I you mean, made a spot there, in the semi-finals as well. So please go ahead. Let's take a look at this tweet. It's a wonderful read. <laughs> yes. It's actually really funny. So, so he Dennis, says... Dennis, how... Dennis says, how funny will, be, will it be if Pakistan win an ICC event that India are hosting. Oh my, it's already <laughs> funny, can I tell you that? Because, <coughs> like you said, I mean, in the first time ever, we've quickly, not in the first time ever, but very fast as compared to before, we've quickly moved into the semifinals too. Yeah. And this tweet now is resonating with a lot of people because it just not only makes you think, but it's making India think as well. <laughs> I mean, I, I believe that, you know, it's making everybody think, but not right. just that, but imagine that, you know, Alhamdulillah, Allah has been so... Uh, Alami, Alami has been blessing us so much that Alhamdulillah that now when finally that the ICC T20 World Cup is being hosted by India yeah. that Pakistan has actually gotten an opportunity to kind of win the final and then there are a lot of experts who are saying that Pakistan is actually going to do so as well and we do not certainly look like underdogs you know imagine uh, I because, don't think we are yeah this. because earlier whenever we used to compete in any tournament you know people would be like you know Pakistan's going to be an underdog as well and and then they can upset you and whatnot so you know this time around ladies and gentlemen I think we are on it we want it we have it Inshallah, and we are praying to Allah Almighty and rest. I think that the boys in the green are actually doing a wonderful job. Definitely, and we still have, of course, a lot of hopes for yeah. them. Nonetheless, you know what? Even if you guys don't make it in the future, I mean, I hope you do, of course. Even if you guys don't make it to the finals, we're really happy we're that you still... Yeah, 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 we're so happy with your performance. But but, but I think, I think uh, towards the end uh, of this story, ladies and gentlemen, what I believe is that either it's going to be Pakistan versus New Zealand in the finals. Really? Or either it's going to be Pakistan versus England. Even though England did apologize, you know, for cancelling their tour, but, you know, I think this World Cup, Pakistan is just settling their scores with everybody else. Yeah, no? <laughs> yeah I think that's what it is. But there are a lot of other people, Chiza, who've actually brought a lot of name to Pakistan as well. And one of those uh, uh, people, uh, you know, it's her eighth death anniversary, ladies and gentlemen. So we're talking about Reshma Ji as well. So everybody, please make sure that you remember Reshma Ji in your prayers. And uh, Ladies and gentlemen, of course, she's a legend. We remember her till date. We will always remember her. Let's take a listen to her... Wow, so may her soul rest in peace and for all of those people who are left behind in her family as well, you know, patience for you as well and uh, the entire Pakistani nation and people all over the globe, all her fans, I think they do miss her as well. But obviously, you know, whenever you kind of miss Reshma Ji, you, all you need to do is put on a track, listen uh -huh. to it and reminisce over that as well. You transport it back in time. Exactly. But, but Shiza, you know what, these legends have actually left a legacy behind as well, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, Let's let's talk about uh, Madam Noor Jahan. Let's talk about Reshma Ji as well. And you know, even in today's time, if we talk about any, if we talk about Kuratul and Baloch, mm. if we talk about Momna Mustasan, you know, if we talk about all of those female artists, I think that the legacy that they are leaving behind is that whatever women want to do within this space, they can do that. Of course, and it's so brilliant. And I think. And I think, you know, Shazad, especially talking about Reshma Ji and uh, women from her likes or from her era, I feel like we owe so much to them. Exactly. Because first of all, culturally belonging to this part of the world as well, and then sort of uh, fighting the systems actually to come in the working space, to come yeah. in the market and perform with our abilities that we have to, we definitely owe it to our ancestors over here for taking the first step. True. Because if they didn't, Shazad, and if they weren't accepted in the market, it, we would have, we might would have to be the first ones and it's always the hardest for the first Exactly, ones. which is so, why, you know, I would kind of want to name uh, Taira Sayyidji over here as well, Fatma Surayya Bajia as well, course. and then Nasibo Lal as well. You know, for all of these ladies, the amount of work they've put in, I think that they've contributed towards the art and culture and the heritage of Pakistan as well, which and then, we want hmm, it to be there. So, and, and, you know, we want the newer generations to kind of learn that this is where Pakistani arts, culture and heritage has actually progressed, or absolutely. probably arts and culture only as well. Because heritage, obviously, all of these people, the amount of work they have done, it has got a shelf life of millions and millions of years. Of and course. people to come, obviously, they would want to learn from them as well. And which is why all hmm. the inspiring and aspiring singers, you know, that's what they do. They kind of listen to all of these legends, which is why, you know, that the greater message is of women empowerment. Absolutely. And you know what? I think in, in our particular case, since we are a TV person, or we are media personnel, 
we owe it to them in a way, especially, you know, in case of newscasters as well, radio jockeys as well, people who were just singing on radio or TV, um, especially female I'm talking about, Shaisa Zaidi used to be my favorite as yeah, well, yeah, English yeah. and Urdu. So I think we have to definitely hats off to all those women who took the first step. But that's not it, Shazad. It's yeah. not just media anymore. Of course, it's 2021. We are moving forward with the world too. But while media is one of the things where women along with men are equally flourishing, there are so many other avenues yeah. right now. And to name them, I mean, to name a few, of course, your head is just clouded thinking about it. But I love the fact how um, ever since I started working on this show, I have been in conversation with and I have been, uh, you know, sort of interacting with a lot of businesswomen, wow. a lot of female entrepreneurs. Wow. And and it's sort of really inspiring for me because I've always wanted to have a business of my own, something of my own. And I look up to these people, you know, and, sort and, of and let's talk about it. OK, you know, so if, if you ever wanted to be a business woman, what kind of business would you want to venture in? Oh my God, of course I'm going to start with designing my own dresses wow. and then with all the money inshallah I make, I'm going to make a coffee house. Wow, well, that's <laughs> wonderful, that's brilliant. And you know, for, for all of those ladies we have had on our show, Shiza, I believe that, you know, that a lot of people are taking or drawing inspiration from them as well. Yes. Because just a few days ago, I still remember that there was this lady on our show who actually had a lot of other companies. You yeah. know, I don't remember the name of the company because it was a lot of online startups as well where uh, her kid actually wanted to own a Lamborghini and she was the <gasps> mother oh, yes, who yes, actually yes. kept on saying, yes, put the, you know, we're going Anushka to get it. Anushka was here, you know, yes. and, and, you know, that's the kind of energy and that's the kind of confidence I want from Pakistani women from all over the world, you know, because there are Pakistani men and women all over the world and they're contributing towards the economic prosperity of our country as well. And such is an example yeah. of this very amazing person. Do you want to kind of introduce? Are All we ready? Right. Uh, yes, we are ready. I hope she's ready as well, ladies and gentlemen. Of course, she happens to be an entrepreneur and she's going to let us know her, well, challenges, of course, but I want to talk about how she can inspire a lot success of people story. who are, yes, yeah, success story, who are looking at her right now. She happens to be Noreen Kafar. Assalamu alaikum, Noreen. Welcome to our show again. Wa alaikum assalam. Thank you very I hope much. You're already having an amazing morning. Yes, it is. It's an event okay. happening, going to be happening in next an hour's time. So I'm all prepared for that. Well, that's wonderful. But but Noreen, to be very honest, thank you very much for giving us time as well. And there's one more thing which I wanted to kind of ask, and that is that for all of those women who are entrepreneurs, because this is something where which one thinks that okay, you know, if we are going to have our own business, we can wake up at any time and we can sleep at any time. You know, so for you to be early uh, up this early, is it is it really important? Because you know, you're 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 focused on your goals, and that you have your own business, you have your own achievements to pursue. So, is it really important for you to get up early, or you can get get up at any time you want? <laughs> it is. If you want to pursue your goals with real enthusiasm, it is very important to wake up early, plan your day accordingly, and then work. Once you establish, then you can wake up at any time you like. But if you are in the early stages of startup, it is important that you have to plan your day accordingly, plan your goals accordingly. You should have your fortnightly goals, monthly goals, quarterly goals, so that you know you know where you're going wrong. So you get hold of the issue and adjust it and settle it and respond accordingly. So you have to be wow. proactive. So in order to be proactive, you have to rise early. That's what I think and I believe in and I practice it since I was in my teens. Now I am in my TYs. <laughs> wow, that's wonderful. Do you know, speaking about that, you know, so I know, Shiza, that you have a question. We, uh, we both are excited uh, always when we <laughs> see such a success story as well. So yeah. let's differentiate in between short term goals and long term goals as mm. well, because that's where a lot of people get confused. Imagine that, you know, that we were brought up in families where uh, parents would always say that, hey, you know what? do something big, do something big, do something big. True. But nobody would ever tell you what you really need to do or on what path you really need to tread on. Hmm. So, you know, for entrepreneurs, I believe that, you know, that whatever path they're going on is, is chosen by them in the first place. And then obviously they do have mentors in life who kind of help them decide that, hmm. okay, this is your long-term goal and this is your short-term goal. So in your case, how did you do that, that you kind of prioritize your short-term and long-term goals? Uh, Short-term goals are planned to have the quick wins in order to run the operational expenses of oneself and the business at large. So you got to, at times, adopt to certain policies, certain uh, projects, which gives you quick wins. You know, you need you need to have cash flows better. But in the longer run, you're always looking at the group of companies, means 
probably I'll have nodding of our group of companies in the later part of the years ahead coming in. But at the moment, I have two companies. So in order to run two companies, it is very, very important to work on the short term goals as well. So if I get, if I'm in, into the business of construction. So if I get an opportunity to do some you know, renovation, I take the opportunity. If the margins are less, still I will take it because you know you, I'm making sure that my break even is met. So you got to analyze and then short term goals is working on your crows, acquaintances, where you know you're going to talk to Shazad and say, Shazad, can you just uh, connect me with somebody who can give me this business? So he can always give a call and ask, hey, buddy, I have a friend. He's a very good company. Please give her business. So you do all your merit analysis and everything, but a call from a friend and an acquaintance help you grow onto your, achieve your short-term goals. That leads you to achieve your long-term strategic goal. Strategic wow. goals take time. It's a 15 years, 20 years process. Uh, well, yeah, yeah, that's true. And you know, that is what my next question was sort of going to be, because I remember, Noreen, when I met you for the first time, it was, uh, I think it was right after the pandemic broke and you had just started a new business in Pindi somewhere okay. and it just shut down because of the quarantine and lockdown. Wow. So I want you, you to, yeah, I do. <laughs> so I want you to tell me, first of all, how important it is to be patient in this business. How does, I mean, patience help you in terms of long and short term goals as well? And then, I mean, in terms of commitment, because if something like that would happen to me, and I'm saying this because I'm not a businesswoman right now, maybe my mind will change. If something like that would happen to me, I'd be like, Ye to liye achha hi nahi tha. thank God it's over, <laughs> you know? And can I please uh, just I request somebody in the uh, MCR to please raise the volume? Please. I request. Yes, go on, Noreen. Actually, uh, what happens is uh, when you really want to achieve as an entrepreneur in the long run, if yeah. you fail once, it's fine. You have to stand up. It is very difficult to stand up again and start all over. Um, hmm. But when you are determined and you really know what exactly you want to achieve, you just say a cross onto the people philosophy, what would people think if I have, I will, you know, start my business all over again. In business, you have to focus on your goals, what others are thinking about you, what they're talking about you, doesn't matter, good or bad, people should talk about you because you are in the market in the heads of people. So True. when my I was into the hospitality industry, but it was not meant for me at that time, because uh, Allah Almighty sent the COVID-19 and it was a disaster. I totally lost myself and then coming back again, my friends, three Fs in life help you, your friends, family, and the friends of friends. They all helped me achieve my goal. They made me stand up and uh, I got myself back in six months after the trauma of my business loss. And now I'm happy. You <laughs> can see the change because we met last year and now we are talking again. And Marshall, Noreen, we uh, obviously want you to be happy and we want each and every individual individual out there to be happy. And uh, because, you know, uh, even for me, you know, I'm, I'm new to business as well. It's just been two, uh, two years that I've been into business. And yes, I think that profit and losses both are a part of it and that you kind of have to swim through all of that. And, you know, these difficult times are going to come, which is why there's a lot of barakat uh, in business. And yes. Alhamdulillah, you know, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was a businessman himself. But what I wanted to ask was that, you know, you actually spoke about determination. The determination really needs to be there. But then, you know, since you spoke about the market and, you know, the the outer atmosphere, which at times does not really uh, kind of syncs with you as well, or, you know, you're not really very comfortable with, with how the people were trading earlier, and then you have your own practices, and then you have your own values. So how many times do you think that this de determination is bogged down by people in the outer atmosphere just because they do not want any further competition. It happens every day, every second, every moment, because market does not accept change. And when it's some woman bringing in the change and being determined and being focused on her goals, they face a lot of challenges. And at the same time, if you are good in your interpersonal skills, um, to be very precise in your communication skills, uh, you tend to grow more 
if you are really focused and you really know your skill and you really know your product and you own it till the time you don't own your project your product you can sell it you can't convince anybody because market is too huge and because of this pandemic we have come into the era of um, global outreach through the virtual connectivity so in that scenario uh, the market has become too huge too big easy access to market is there it's just up to us how to channelize these opportunities into our uh, profit making business or anything you may call it so every second people are going to say you can't do it why you're doing it because i started um, my business in just new business uh, after my restaurant collapsed uh everybody was like now you're going to do this oh my god why can't you be consistent i'm consistent in my goals i know what i have to achieve but every single day if i hear criticism it makes me strong every day it makes me more strong that you know norin you can do this because everybody is criticizing every single second wait be my family <laughs> and wage be the market but now when i'm smiling you know money is starting pouring into my account and you know if i start spending people are say you see she's doing a great job wow so people always stand with, with you when you are successful when you are in your failures when you're crying nobody stands with you yeah and uh, that's a bit one small one small thing which i wanted to ask and this is something which i've lately realized and that is that do you think that it's only the profits which you get in in terms of money or do you think that there are a lot of other profits within the business there are other profits in the business as well uh profit is just not in terms because if you see the global phenomena of uh, market valuation system it's your worth in the market i might be nothing in terms of monetary thing but if you value based on a certain business balance scorecard you will probably end up valuing me as a 10 million dollar female you know that is how you value yourself under certain criteria but in pakistan uh, unfortunately we do not follow the business balance scorecard which internationally is being followed because the more network you have uh the better and there are more chances of you having uh, investment opportunities at large with you because people trust you because end of the day net worth is equal to your net worth and people have to understand this philosophy that who you network with and why you network with and for women uh, at large i always say because i am working on this for the last 5 uh, plus years now um they don't register their business and at the same time they are very reluctant to network with giants in the market because you have to as per your if you are going to network with the same size business that if micro business how are they going to help because they are struggling on to their own uh battles so you got to have a step ahead and try and network with people who are big mid tier or corporate try and explore certain opportunities for women out there you know so that you know people understand they if you speak your heart out they will definitely get to know you have got something we can always give it a try it's a new business but we can always give it a try so people have got to think out of box now because it's high time we can't have a crying and a sympathetic attitude at large because in the pandemic there are a lot of women who have suffered losses so once a shoulder can be given but not every day because you know the big shots have also curtail on to the expenses so dollar smile as well and we want to congratulate you and we want to kind of tell you that you really need to keep on going with because there are a lot of people who are drawing inspiration from you so please make sure that you're an emblem you're a beacon and that you continue to strive for excellence thank you very much for giving us time it was wonderful to be in conversation with you thank you take care thank well, you very much once again wow uh, i mean imagine so inspiring yeah exactly other than being inspiring i think that what she actually spoke about was very realistic yes absolutely and that you know that your net worth is your network and ladies and gentlemen inverted commas please make sure that you keep it with you as well a lot of people feel shy while networking and i think that I'm, they okay. really need to put their shy side apart make sure that when you connect with somebody if it's a business meeting 
make it professional, make it look professional, and don't take it personal. You know, you know, there are things which people say to you just so that they can actually get a good deal and that you get a good deal out of it. Because mutually, when you start to get good deals together, I believe that there's, it's, it's hard for other people to kind of stop you because now you're a team of two. Absolutely. Speaking of good deals, Sindh is getting a good deal in yes. terms of, well, a public holiday. <laughs> All right. So I think before that, we have to mention uh, in uh, the province Sindh of Pakistan, there's a huge, huge Hindu population. Yep. And of course, everyone loves the fact because we all live in harmony and whatnot. There are parts of Sindh where uh, Muslims and Hindus sort of live together in a way that when it's Muslims festivities, they will all come together. Uh, Hindus will uh, sort of, you know, help them. So that's the good guard. news. Yes, that is the good news. That's Good news. A holiday, ladies and gentlemen, has been announced by the Sindh government and that too, a national holiday on Diwali. You know, so I believe that this is the right direction to move in. And uh, since I've been in Karachi for a longer period of time, there are parts of Sindh where Shiza, there's a majority of Hindus as well. And mm -hmm. Alhamdulillah, they live peacefully. And so for our Hindu community to celebrate Diwali, it's going to be a public holiday which has been announced by the Sindh government. Congratulations to all of those people <laughs> who are out there. Finally, you will get to celebrate Diwali and that too on a holiday. Absolutely. Wow, and nobody's going to cut your salary even if you're missing out on work. I know, wow. right? What a life, I you mean. Know? But yes, happy Diwali in advance. Of course, we are going to talk about it and have probably a segment about it on the show as well. But ladies and gentlemen, right now we're headed to a short break. When we come back, I want to further the discussion of where Noreen was telling us how to go about businesses because right now when we talk about entrepreneurship or sort of expanding our businesses, the arena is so vast and constantly changing that it is definitely a challenge yeah. well stay tuned to find out what it is good morning we'll make sure you are on your toes <laughs> let's do that Mosque or the Royal Mosque in Lahore commissioned by the sixth Mughal Emperor Aurangzeb in 1671 and completed in 1673 is the second largest mosque in Pakistan and South Asia and the fifth largest mosque in the world. Epitomizing the beauty, passion and grandeur of the Mughal era. It is Lahore's most famous landmark and a major tourist attraction. <laughs> Capable of accommodating 5,000 worshippers in its main prayer hall and a further 95,000 in its courtyard, it remains the largest mosque in the world. From 1673 to 1986, a period of 313 years, when overtaken in size by the completion of the Faisal Mosque in Islamabad. Today, it remains the second largest mosque in Pakistan and South Asia and the fifth largest mosque in the world after Masjid Al-Haram, Grand Mosque of Mecca and Al-Masjid al nabvi Prophet's Mosque in Medina. The Hassan II Mosque in Casablanca and the Faisal Mosque in Islamabad. To appreciate its large size, the four minarets of the Bachai Mosque are 13.9 feet, 4.2 meters tall than those of the Taj Mahal, and the main platform of the Taj Mahal can fit inside the 278,784 square feet courtyard of the Bachai Mosque, which is the largest mosque courtyard in the world. Architectural Wonders of Pakistan
All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. For everybody who just got tuned into PTP World, you're watching what this morning. I'm saying Shazad Khan and Shaza Hashmi. Earlier, we were in conversation with Ms. Noreen and we were talking about how important it is for anybody to kind of take up on their own goals and achievements and decide in between the long term and the short term goals to be successful towards the end of their career. Well, uh, okay, so I have to really further that, but I guess before that, let me mention that uh, while climate change is a very global issue now, of yeah. course, it's irreversible, there's no going back, I want to say, but there's moving forward, and that can only be done when we get together, of yeah. course, yeah. because if we were to point fingers at people or if we were to point fingers at states for that matter, there's only a few, a, a really small percentage of states that have actually caused this huge impact because of their industrialization, which un unfortunately we all have to bear the brunt of it. Yeah. So COP26 is one of the conferences about climate change going on in Glasgow right now where world leaders from all, of course, all the member states of the United Nations are coming together, discussing the issues and trying to reach solutions. The thing over here is, Shazad, there have been so many, of course, uh, protocols or treaties that they've signed about this. The worst part is when we talk about the largest contributors, US, China, and India, they are the ones to sort of back out of these treaties whenever yeah. they want yeah. for different reasons. Of course, they're a part of the Security Council, so they have the power to actually opt for what they want to mm -hmm. and what not. Oh my God, I have so much to say. Exactly, Let's and in addition to that, there's one more point, and that is that imagine that for all of those countries, because I still remember while Trump was actually running his election campaign, that's that's yeah, something which he kept on saying that, you know, that we're not going to stop industrialization and that we are going to make sure that there's going to be more industry as well. And then that was the time when the ambassadors of the climate change kind of spoke about it, but they never kind of gave it a thought. But hmm. all of a sudden, now these countries have come together to make sure that they are actually going to make a change or probably bring about a difference as well. But imagine that for a developing country who weren't really a contributor to what or Point where we are, percent? imagine that Sorry, they will you? definitely be hindered with the kind of progress they were supposed to make in order to kind of follow these treaties and agreements as well. But we okay. actually have a small report. Yes. Let's go take a look at this report of, uh, about climate change. And once you guys will come back, we're very lucky that we've actually been joined by an expert and an expert to be as well. <laughs> Let's do that. Good morning. Nature is suffering. Earth is clearly urging a call to action. Australian fires, heat records, and the worst locust invasion in Kenya. Now we face COVID-19, a worldwide health pandemic linked to the health of our ecosystem. To fight this challenge, leaders from around the world gather in Glasgow to debate how to keep the planet in a livable condition. World leaders have pledged to shift to a more sustainable economy that work for both people and the planet. Global climate is projected to continue to change over this century and beyond. The magnitude of climate change beyond the next few decades depends primarily on the amount of heat-trapping gases emitted globally and how sensitive the Earth's climate is to those emissions. As far as Pakistan is concerned, in 2014, the government of Pakistan started massive afforestation drive through a billion tree tsunami. The ambitious project included restoring mangroves, increasing forest cover and planting trees in urban settings. There are significant green initiatives taken by the government under the Clean and Green Pakistan initiative, including the 10 billion tree tsunami, new electric vehicle policy, green jobs initiative that demonstrated Pakistan commitment to combating climate crisis, protecting biological diversity and promoting ecosystem restoration. Recently, Pakistan launched a new platform called the Ecosystem Restoration Fund to create green jobs, support nature-based solutions to fight climate change and promote biodiversity conservation. Prime Minister of Pakistan Imran Khan has announced plans to expand the country's forests by planting 10 billion trees over five years. Pakistan government is fully committed to addressing the issue of climate change, including through the 10 billion tree initiative to restore and enhance over 1 million hectares of forest by 2023. Well, this was really detailed and informative. Yeah, I'm glad. Sort of all right. So without any further ado. Restoration. Let's yeah. do that. How are we supposed to do that? It's something which we really want to ask. Yeah, Without any further ado, we're very lucky, the ladies and gentlemen, that we have actually been joined by an expert to be, as I mentioned. She happens to be an environmentalist and she is Miss Adina Tahir. Hello, Asalaamu Alaikum. Good morning. Wa Alaikum Asalaam. Thank you for having me today. Thank you very much for Our joining pleasure. us. It's wonderful to have you. And ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you, climate change is definitely for real because the last two times it was a hailstorm over here in Islamabad. My cars got a lot of dents. Really? And we certainly do not want that. The olives were this big of size as well. And it is so unnatural to kind of see 
this size of olas imagine that olas coming down you know somewhere as the size of a football we do not want that if you do not want that we really need to kind of work towards that as well because uh, an expert is over here with us she'll be telling us more about it she happens to be miss mariam shabir she happens to be an environmentalist as well and in a blink of an eye from another television <laughs> to ptb world hello assalamu alaikum good morning hello good morning how are you i'm good i'm great thank you very much for joining us thank you all right so we again as always we short in time as so really quickly one of the really important things so far of cop 26 is that 40 countries have signed up that the governments are going to make substantial policies yeah. that will shape everything in terms of going green mariam i want you to of course enlighten us and explain this as well uh thank you uh, i think it is important to make policies but it is very important to implement it because yeah. <laughs> your policies yeah. on the paper and you don't have implementation it's of no use mm -hmm. so i think there is good step but you know this is 26th cop in a row yeah and just mm. look at the progress you know just 40 countries have made uh, agreed to make policies and its implementation is you know god knows what will happen you know this is to me cop is uh, something uh, which is opportunity for many businesses right yeah. and which is politics uh, of the rich countries uh, for the developing countries and poor <laughs> countries like us because you know this is 26 cop and they keep discussing you know their targets and net zero emissions and all and they keep using fossil fuels and coal and they expect from developing countries like pakistan to put cap okay we have put cap on sahib yeah. coal mm. power plant Uh, uh under cpac we are doing it we we are contributing our ndcs you know nationally determined contributions are really yeah. good and impressive being a developing country but you know it's a rich country i'm very critical you know <laughs> because uh, i have been to cop and i know <laughs> what it is okay and uh, you know it, this is this is um, responsibility of uh, developed world yeah. to pay and uh, fulfill the promise of 100 billion dollars uh, uh, to pay to pakistan uh, to meet uh, our adaptation and mitigation needs exactly okay. and in addition to that i i believe that it's important to be critical but other mm -hmm. than that for all of these developed countries to kind of move on towards green steel green agriculture and you know all of these things because there are five different subjects to it as well yeah but i i believe that you know if there are scientific interventions uh which pakistan can even do we have a lot of smart people we really didn't do that because we really didn't prioritize it as well you know you go to our gali mohallas now they're polluted i know a lot of people have uh actually started to kind of feel asthmatic as well and that you know the breathing air the pollution it's everything's there even lahore was actually kind of labeled as the second or the third or the First. fifth fifth probably worst populated city in the entire world yeah. so you know i think that this these are the facts but imagine why do you think that we are not able to kind of scientifically intervene and make sure that we kind of start to work on alternate fuels i mean people are making smart motorways all over the world mm -hmm. because the cars will be driven by a battery in days to come as well and that too on autopilot but we haven't done that we are not even ready to do that we still love the sound of the engine let's rev it <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you know what? i think um, yeah. i think the environmental engineer should yes. answer that absolutely <laughs> go on so i would say that we are seeing this shift initially we started with activism but slowly we realized that activism alone is not going to solve problems we have to move towards a practical approach yeah. mm -hmm. so in my youth training ses sessions as well we're teaching students that no matter what degree they come from mm -hmm. they have to take solutions for climate action as part of their everyday strategies right. so now we're seeing innovations in industry innovation in businesses where you're continuing with the strengths that you have but you are finding a way to integrate climate Uh, priorities into your actions but are we really finding yeah. a way yeah we are how uh, so for example we can see the rise of the digital industry right yeah. so mm -hmm. now we're using uh, the philosophy of tech for good so we're integrating technology into smart agriculture okay. into uh, streamlining your industrial processes so that you can capture but carbon oh, emissions that is brilliant i'm sorry i have to cut you because i want answers of yeah. course you said we in terms of agriculture agri agriculture yes. technology yes. Yes. who's we Because yeah. every time we have had farmers yes. on our show, I'm yeah. serious yeah. about this, yeah. and I love to talk you know, about I am, this. I'm just yeah. smiling. My <laughs> entire village is actually, you know, all about yes. farmers and whatnot. Yes. Yes. Every yeah. time we've had those people or the representatives, yes. they never are on the same page I as know. you. I know you have a very real concern. This is where capacity building comes into play. Okay. So basically, in Pakistan, uh, we are dealing with people who are in rural areas, yeah. and it's our agriculture is not a consolidated sector, right? Mm -hmm. It's a lot of small-scale farmers that are acting. So this is where capacity building takes in place, where you. 
two focus on building the capacity of the local people and the local communities mm -hmm. so that they can actively um, and sustainably carry on with the projects that they are doing so you provide Great. them with technical skills you provide them with financial uh, support uh, and you also train them enough so that you know they can take leadership of their projects but and, it's definitely yeah. not less than a dream uh, coming true you know because it, yeah. it, it's certainly mm. like it's that you know that I'm, I'm one of those sibling amongst my family yes, members yes. who's really not doing yeah. very well in life <laughs> and that all the siblings really need to come together to kind of support me which or, certainly does not happen and if it does happen it is very rare mm, but we really yeah. need uh, we really need a realistic solution to it because oh, yes, nobody's yes. going to come in and yeah. Even if, because we are talking about the largest contributors as well, where you actually mentioned about US, you mentioned about India, you mentioned about right. China. Imagine two of these countries are just on the left and right of I Pakistan mean, we're as well. I mean, we are in, in the yes. middle. And while they are focusing on how to kind of move on towards greener solutions, obviously they have a lot of money to spend. Yeah. And which they are not really willing to kind of share it with Pakistan because they have to do it. Uh, first, right? And then they will yeah. think about yeah. us. So what is the realistic solution which we have to ourselves? Because you very rightly mentioned that it's the 26th conference which is taking yes, place. Yes. The policy is there, but there's no uh, Implementation. As in certain results which we can see. Because unfortunately, it's a very sensitive thing which I'm going to say, but I think COVID kind of contributed towards, um, I mean, ozone healing up. And, and there were a lot of yeah. other things. The, the air was lesser polluted. So please go ahead. So you just mentioned about China and India. I'll touch briefly on that. You know, China under CPEC is helping Pakistan uh, to adapt uh, smart uh, technology for agriculture uh, oh, zones, no. and they are specific specific side uh, where they which we're doing, of course. Yes. Of course. And uh, related to India, you know, India has you know clearly uh, denied that we cannot bring uh, emissions to zero because they are moving to renewables, but they said that they are developing country, <laughs> mm -hmm. and they want you know bring <coughs> uh, emissions to that much. Of course, they have set uh, certain limits, so uh, we are of course in between. Mm -hmm. uh, as far as the, you know, this Pakistan's concern and what should we do uh, practically we're not is even you know contributor I think it's 0 0.07 or 0 0.05 percent yes that that's right but you know uh, we have to do something on ground as a be be yeah. before it's too late which we are doing in our limited capacity wow. and as far as this COP26 is concerned uh, you know under Paris agreement uh, uh, you know it is a uh, liability of the developed world you know I was uh, talking about climate finance and you know dollar 100 billion so there are adaptation and mitigation needs of Pakistan and under Paris agreement they are also supposed to uh, transfer clean technology to developing countries you know and they are not doing it that's why I was very critical <laughs> in the very first question because they just talk and they are not doing it even US you know, which United is Nations. biggest biggest contributor to uh, pollution they they were supposed to you know they are behind uh, every country uh, yeah. you know when it comes to climate finance and 80 percent of countries you know uh, have just uh, uh, pledges to uh, contribute to climate finance and the rest 20 percent is still awaiting which I is why you know i think yeah. i certainly will agree with dina where she said that you know the activism only will not help as well yes, which yes. is wonderful but now because you actually happen to be an environment engineer yeah we know, love this the is term. something which i really <laughs> need to ask because yeah. we're doing a lot of construction these days yes, a lot of yes, property dealers yeah. are making societies yeah. and whatnot yeah. even people who had farming land they're selling it off and making sure that they actually own a plaza yeah. so that they can rent it out and uh, have their livelihood to it now imagine that in days to come how do you think that all of these techniques are going to change into a very greener form of it where we will yeah. not be contributing so what materials in days to come we will be using and i'm asking this because i believe ladies and gentlemen if she has said that that it's going to be a hundred billion dollar market yeah. at least 10 or 11 billion dollars are going to come down to pakistan this is the right time to import that or probably you know kind of produce it by ourselves as well and then sell mm -hmm. it in the market so what materials please tell us all right okay it's an opportunity <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, in the post-COVID uh, economy, basically, it will be our priority uh, to boost our industrial sector and our agricultural sector yep. and our construction sector because that's very important in Pakistan, yeah. right? Yeah. So, when it comes to construction, let's begin with those projects that are actually climate friendly. So, for example, public transport. Uh, let me just give an example of Karachi right now. They have the Green Line, which is a zero emissions uh, train system that is being developed because it's going to use cow dung to fuel uh, the bus, uh, all yeah. of the buses and the bus stations, exactly. right? Biogas. Yeah. So, in terms of the construction projects that Pakistan can take on, which also creates job opportunities and livelihood opportunities, uh, we should look towards public infrastructure that improves the mobility in your cities and reduces the needs of private um, cars well, no to be used for your daily commute, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, then we need a lot of uh, urban uh, management and urban planning to take place while we're developing our cities. Towards the industrial side, so Prime Minister Imran Khan has announced that we will no longer be importing coal. Uh, 
and that is a very important decision because for example our cement industry and our textile and our chemical industries they have all been using imported coal as of now right mm. so it's very interesting to see how these factories are going to adjust with the changes in the supply of their energy resources because they ha will have to replace coal now and but it's it will very, be very risky because it yeah. totally depends on the quality of coal as well and you know for the chemical to yes. use that quality of coal i don't know whether yes. you know they will still manage it with the coal which we produce yes. over here no the goal will be to move towards renewable energy so pakistan in the uh, ndc's that they submitted for 2021 right before cop 26 they said that around 60% of your energy should now come from renewable energy sources which is basically your uh, wind energy solar energy and your water energy right so uh, water i think we won't yeah. be relying on because water scarcity is on top of yeah. the okay, scarcity the agenda. is a very tricky terms so scarcity and shortage is a little different yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but so we have to use this term to warn mm -hmm. the public considering the public we yes. dealing with uh, so, that uh, is true but because our future yeah. generations might not even even have water to kind of take a bath early morning just like we do every yes. single day <laughs> and there are countries now ladies and gentlemen where in their hotels you are only allowed to actually take a bath after 2 days or and probably yeah. you actually have to take a bucket go fill it up and come back to your place yeah. So that's how the condition is. That's right. where environmental engineering comes with wastewater engineering technology. So basically, scarcity can also be when you have all the water in the world, but it's too polluted for your use, right? Mm -hmm. It's unfit for human consumption. So we have to focus on the area of wastewater engineering. Right now, in Pakistan, less than one percent of your domestic wastewater gets treated, mm -hmm. which is an absolute area of concern. So, but again, another opportunity. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but we are looking towards solutions. Our NDCs have been globally recognized at COP26 this time around that they. very ambitious and they're looking at a lot of opportunities for women and youth inclusion as well i Brilliant. like the term ambitious i yeah. was i, I was really going to gonna come to you because every time you mentioned our envies you take yeah. mariam's face was <laughs> it had a face so first of all i want you to add on to that and i want you to wrap up the segment with when we talk about um, when you said we have to really tap on the billion dollar industry that might be coming in as well yeah. i want you to sort of quickly explain how pakistan can help on to it uh, green steel was one of the things being discussed so far recently of course there are going to be other Hydro topics still this discussions yeah. that means either water what's that either hydrogen or electricity will produce steel that means green what are some of the other things that we can or will tap on you know there are a lot of sectors which we can tap on but everything comes down to climate finance yeah. you know she was just mentioning about you know ambitious uh, in <laughs> right, goals that right. pakistan yeah. has to achieve which i believe uh, this government can achieve to some extent okay. but uh, you know this ndcs are for 5 6 years you know you have to do it by 2030 and some targets are by 2040 as well mm. so you know renewable energy you know for shift thing to renewable energy from the existing coal we are using would only require dollar 101 billion by 2030 mm -hmm. we don't have that money and developed world has to pay us for that damage they have done due to their global emissions yeah, you know that's true. but there are happen. nature based solutions like 10 billion trees for now me and all yeah. electric vehicle yeah. policy by, by 2030 but then again there are differences between uh, uh, ministry of climate change petroleum and energy ministry you know they have to sit together to uh, figure it out that Thank how they can go about it as well yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. wow. i just like to a little more to climate financing so basically we realizing that we don't have to fund everything mm -hmm. but by supporting the private sector and by supporting public and private sector collaborations we can actually set up businesses that are streamlining mitigation and adaptation into your national policies right mm -hmm. so you don't have to fund everything you yeah. can actually create opportunities for businesses right. and for green businesses I mean, it looks so, like as if yeah. you're telling me that you know it's by the end of the day it's still going to be a fund but yeah. it's going to be given by the private institution true for example you have yeah. a lot of small to medium enterprises in the country yeah. right so uh, I mean, those we want them to exist as well you know we want them to thrive yeah. so a lot of these smes they are led by women they're led by you that otherwise can't find jobs so if you start funding green smes in the country yeah. um and if you start creating a business environment that supports green businesses so that is going to lead to a lot of good right. results so wonderful thank idea so that's the kind of corporate social responsibility everybody needs to fulfill <laughs> right thank you so much ladies for being with us and Welcome. being so enlightening in the morning ladies and gentlemen right now of course PTV world will be bringing uh, the latest news up to you uh, stay tuned to find out more and we'll see you at the same time tomorrow morning inshallah take care good morning we're a great team and we love working and we love bringing smiles to your face look after yourselves <laughs> one two three good morning thank you thank you